Hello and welcome to WEF Weekly and uh, this week is Nations Cup week, the Ida Development Nations Cup. Looking forward to team competition throughout this week. Of course we're going to have some Grand Prix action. That's going to be slightly different this week because that's going to be on Sunday afternoon. And uh, also a big week for the MSU 25 series as well with the semi-finals taking place on Friday night. So there's a lot of night classes going on this week. We're here on Wednesday. We're between the night classes at the moment as they warm up for that Nations Cup. And I'd like to say alongside me taking a little bit of time out. Uh, from that is my panel for today. Uh, firstly up is going to be Mimi Gotchman. Mimi, team rider for Team USA, uh, youth equestrian gold medalist already. How are you feeling about it? I'm very excited. I want to keep a cool head and make sure I do my job correctly. <laughs> You've been going through the team shoot this afternoon. Yes. Uh, does that make you more nervous or a bit more chilled out? A little bit of both. I think it's exciting that they want us to be shown on the Instagram and online and stuff and they're proud of us, but it also makes me realize I have to like represent and do it correctly. So. So a little bit of both. A little bit of, little bit of butterflies. <laughs> yes. Uh, very few butterflies, I expect, from Keen O'Connor. 135 Nations Cups now. You've been a European gold medalist, Olympic medalist as well. Uh, you can take all this in your stride, can't you, Keen? Uh, it seems uh, it's no harm to have the butterflies. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you're only as good as your, as your next round, really. So it's, it's, uh, it's great to have the experience. And it's, it's, uh, it's always a new challenge, new horses. And, uh, you know, you're, you look forward to the, to, the, to the task ahead, really. Irish team here in the United States, outside of the likes of Dublin. This is probably an almost slightly home uh, event for you because you get so much support here. In yeah, Florida. there's so many Irish based here <laughs> in Wellington and uh, they take over the, the, the bar here at the Tiki Hut and they give plenty of cheers. But also for us, it really builds up to the year ahead. Um, we tend to like to jump on the Nations Cup here because it sets the standard. You get to know new horses, new partnerships and uh, gives you an idea what's going to happen uh, for the summer once. Well, you guys were the winners last year. Uh, it's true. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes' time. In the meantime, we talk Mexico and Eugenio Garza on to Team Mexico as well. Uh, you've been a past winner here in the United States in Nations Cup. You won in Dublin uh, before you were on that winning team before now as well. Uh, Pan Am Silvers. Uh, again, you've got some good experience under your belt now, uh, Eugenio. How do you feel about this week? Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, like he had said, Nations Cup is always a very interesting week to me. I think. It's one of those weeks that really stands out in the 12-week circuit that we have here. I mean, with this week and the finale probably being the, the you know, my favorite of the weeks. Um, and team competition is always a, a, a great atmosphere and, and it should be a good, good Saturday night class. And again, you usually have floods of fans in here. Yeah, it's a second home Nations Cup for us too. <laughs> it's not bad. Well, a lot to look forward to uh, through the week for that uh, team competition that's going to be on Saturday afternoon and the second round on Saturday evening as well. Looking forward to that. We're also going to reflect a little on last week as well as that Lugano Diamonds five-star Grand Prix. Uh, what a shining star it was. And uh, the shining star of the night was, of course, uh, Laura Crouch and uh, Balotinu. Let's hear from that uh, gold medal winning US star who topped the Grand Prix. Here's what she said. I had a good feeling when I walked the course and uh, my horse jumped very well on Thursday so this is just you know a dream come true. It's always fun to win here and particularly a five star. Fence one you didn't really need to come too fast to because you had to make a very short turn back to two. You then had a little bit of a gallop over to the wall which was very careful jump and then you had to get back on the double which I took a real shot there. I think I came in actually a little more forward than I would have liked to but he tried so hard coming out. Uh, you gallop sort of all the way across the end to a vertical. Gallop again down to an oxer. I don't know how many strides I did. Um, and then you had to fly around this gazebo to a very plain looking vertical. And then it was seven strides the last, which my horse just put in a heroic effort there. I am just so excited with Balotinu. He's been so great for so long. And um, I haven't had many opportunities to do a jump off. And I feel like tonight he just, he was right there for all of it. Well, there, Laura Crouch uh, winning here on uh, Saturday night. And for those of you that were following before the class, we brought you the new Grand Prix show as well as we're doing before all the big five-star Grand Prix and this week as well before the Nations Cup where we chat to our experts about what and who they think might be the picks for the week. And I can say somebody got it right this time. I was delighted to say that Georgina Bloomberg was on our lineup. Take a look at what Georgina said on Saturday night. She got it spot on. Legado Diamonds Grand Prix. Let's get into our final picks from my expert team here. Geor Georgina, let's go with you. You're going with Laura Crouch. Yeah. You're going with Laura Crouch. Okay. Balotinu. Jimmy? I'm going I'm to stick with Shane. I'm going to go with Shane. You know, but we did talk about Bertram Allen a second ago. 
Bertram Allen is hot in this ring. He's won big five-star Grand Prix right here. That horse likes this ring, and Bertram has been very hot here in Wellington. Okay, well, he's going to say go for that record third. So uh, Shane Sweetnam there against Jimmy Toronto name. Uh, Danny Waldman. I think Bertram's a good call, but I'm going to stick with Richie Vogel. Okay. I, I believe in him, and I think he's going to try tonight. There we go, we picked the right people to be giving you a little steer into uh, that Grand Prix as well. So well done, Georgina. She's certainly got one up on the rest of us so far. Uh, let's talk that Grand Prix a little between my guest here today. Um, we're going to take a look at the side by side in a second. Um, Kim, that was some Grand Prix on Saturday night. Yeah, it was amazing to watch it and it was only thinking about it the following day and, you know, the atmosphere, the vibe and even for everybody watching on, for young riders and everything, it's really what everyone aspires to. And a competition like that with Laura uh, McLean and uh, and Shane taking the podium was really fantastic to watch. Mimi, for you as a young rider coming there, you've had a couple of Saturday nights in here now through national classes and some of those early Grand Prix. Uh, you've got a taste for it now. Yes, I think that under the lights is a whole nother level of intensity. I get a little bit nervous under the lights because you have to go home and I don't like to rest and you have to like calm down and then come back for the night. But I actually watched that class the whole way through and it was incredible and I was excited for a girl to win. So I was like, go Laura. <laughs> and how does that inspire you? I mean, it shows that um, that I can do it and that one day I hope to be able to win a five star here at WEF and do exactly what Laura does. I mean, she's incredible and she's a huge inspiration. Well, lovely to see from Laura. Eugenio, for you, Saturday night, uh, again, just raises the hairs a little bit. It's exciting. I can't beat it, honestly. It's, uh, it's the day of the week that you, you wait for uh, since Monday. And, and like Kian said, the atmosphere is amazing. And it just brings the whole sport to a different level when it's, you know, uh, the, the stands are full, everyone's cheering their favorite riders on. And you get to see some of the best riders in the world. Um, uh, some we, certainly big performances yeah. in there. Let's take a look at the side-by-side -side between our top two because uh, back to week five, McLean Ward was the winner. Laura Kraut was the winner's time, but these two were combined uh, to take a look at the side-by-side -side of how it fared in that jump off for them as well because it was pretty close stuff indeed. Kian, for you, I mean, you get into Grand Prix like this, it comes down to literally hundreds of a second. You, you can't actually account for that. No, it was, it was close, and I suppose Laura's horse is a real blood horse, and uh, she was tight from one to two. I, just from watching it back, I thought that she was quite quick from the wall back to the double. Maybe she got McLean there, but he really tried hard. You can see here how tight she is. He gets a little more square. She's taken off already, so I think that's where she just nipped in front of him was on the approach to that double. And as I said, her horse is a real blood horse. I was personally delighted to see her winning it because uh, I know the horse was off sometime last yeah. year, and she spent a lot of time getting him back. And I saw her down the Sunshine Tour last October, and she was building him up, she told me, for here as well. So it was lovely to see her uh, get her nose in front. Uh, not that I wouldn't like to see McLean win, but he wins, <laughs> he wins enough. He wins it enough. was nice for her to get her opportunity. But interesting there, when you look, it looks like a bigger gap, but 40.26 against 40.56. Yeah, it was fantastic, actually. And I mean, if you took how tight it was for McLean to be that close and Laura's horse to be so naturally quick, I mean, he did an amazing job. And, of course, your teammates in there, uh, we had a, a big two, three in there, as you say, big performances from Shane Sweetnam and Daniel Coyle, as well as part of that, that top group there, too. Um, it's good for you going back to teams, because you want them on your teams. Absolutely, yeah, we need the good, the good riders with the good horses. And Daniel's done a great job the last couple of five stars. Uh, he has a, that new horse, and he has him up at this level, jumping really good rounds. Yeah. And Shane's horse, I suppose, is a real talking horse. Everybody would kind of rate him as one of the top horses out there. And he showed that again the other night, I mean, particularly his first round, he, he jumped around like it was a 130 course. It's just a different league. And again, for you, I mean, Ireland, you're going to have a different agenda this year. You know, we talked to, we talked to Mexico earlier on. They're going to be aiming towards Pan Ams. You guys are going to be looking towards Europeans. You've got your Olympic qualification. That came with the World Championships. Yeah. So it's an, an interesting year of being able to work with partnerships for potentially Paris the following year. Yeah, I think it's a big uh, relief, I suppose, to have the qualification already because it means that the chef to keep Michael Blake can pick and choose, give other people opportunity and try and give everyone their chance to, to compete on the teams because only by people getting experience do you get the chance to, to jump at a higher level. Like last year here, he had Owen McMahon on the team and he had done the European Championships before that. Max Watchman got one of his early caps then he jumped on the winning team in Dublin. So by blooding new riders and giving them the opportunity, uh, Nations Cups really makes championship riders Absolutely. and uh, it gives the experience and the foundation. Well, a fantastic Grand Prix. Um, you, Henio, you're going to be aiming towards those later in the season as well, I'm sure, because you've, you've had a little bit of a break before coming into this stage. Yeah, definitely. I think it's one of those um, that we're going to be aiming at uh, week nine and, and week 12. 
Um, had a little bit of a break before due to an injury, but you know, back and, and ready to go. Courses feel good, and you know, excited to be part of it uh, again. It's not it's not easy being on the sideline and watching those Grand Prix. You always wanna you always wanna be in there. <laughs> Get, get, get in the battle. And Mimi, uh, taking away from that night, some big performances in there. But we've seen other riders coming through. One of them is on your team this week in Natalie Dean. Yes. Um, the last few weeks, she was, uh, what, about sixth place in the Week 5 mm -hmm. Grand Prix. Yeah. Again, for you, how does that help your path through? Well, she was actually on teams with my sister, so I've known Natalie for quite a while now. And, I mean, she's incredible. Her horse is also something to watch. I mean, she's tiny, but she's got a huge heart. And I'm super excited to work with her. She's super nice and easy to talk to and easy to get to know. And I'm excited for us to kind of get to bond and learn each other a bit better. But she's an incredible rider, and I hope to learn from her. Well, uh, lots of inspiration there from Grand Prix. Let's talk uh, Nations Cup this week, the Idea Development Nations Cup here in Wellington. The team competition, that's where the different countries uh, send out their various teams. I can tell you 11 teams are going to be here on Saturday competing. Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Great Britain, Ireland, Mexico, USA and Venezuela. Um, let's come to you, Yenio, first. 11 teams, it's a big week. It's a big Big week, lots of teams. Um, believe only eight go into the second round. Yes. So, um, yeah, it's fun. I mean, I, I personally like those Nations Cup where there's a bunch of teams and you know anything can really happen. You know, <laughs> that you could be sixth place going into the second round and, and end up on top. Usually, it doesn't happen, but it can. Um, it just makes it interesting. Uh, Yanni, we've got some shots of you as well in the in the Nations Cup here before now. Double clears that you've had in this. Um, doing it here in America. You know, here's, here's one of the, the early rounds because you jump during the day for day one, round one and then night of round two. Uh, you know, how, how much pressure do you feel going into this with, with the team coat on as opposed to your, your usual attire? I think the red coat always, always, you know, has a little bit of weight to it. Um, this particular round, like Kian said, it was great for my horse, who was a, an up and coming horse that did this time of the, of the year last year. Uh, really set him up for the year to come very nicely. And it's one of those Nations Cups that's friendly enough but challenging enough at the same time. Um, the first round being during the day kind of helps you get into it a little bit, get to know the course, and then the lights turn on and, and you know, the challenge is, is a little bit higher, but, but at least uh, you've already tackled it once and, and it gets easier. Kian, you've done plenty of Nations Cups now. We're seeing Eugenio's round there, just at the tail end of this. Um, from getting some good rounds in a Nations Cup, again, that gives you does that give you more or, or is it equal confidence of going well in a Grand Prix? I suppose it's different um, and the sport has changed a lot. I mean, when I started off over 20 years ago, you basically couldn't go to the big shows unless you were on the team. So you did national competitions in your own country and then the chef to keep really uh, decided yeah. where your, your, your destiny. And uh, nowadays it's other circuits, other, other opportunities. Um, and I suppose I'd, I'd love to see the Nations Cups really boosted and, and get the support and sponsorship and stuff they deserve because um, it's a great training ground. I mean, where you get to ride the same course twice, water jump twice, which we probably don't see enough anymore. And it really makes riders. And, and as I said before, I think that the, all the championship riders come from the people who are able to do Nations Cups. The difference being that if you have two down in a Grand Prix, you pack up and you go again next week. But at the Nations Cup, we say it's normally on a Friday at three o'clock, and uh, yeah. that's when you have to deliver. So it makes people be able to 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 put their best foot forward on that day every every time. Mimi, from your point of view, you've done two Nations Cups out in Europe last year. You were in Spain and Portugal. How are you feeling about coming onto home ground now? Yeah, I feel a little bit like I have to prove myself. I'm younger, and I've only been on two teams, like you said, and I feel like I I had some mistakes in the first one, and then as it went, I got better and better. But I feel like I'm usually a pretty confident rider going into the ring, but there's a lot more stakes now going into it with, I mean, three other riders. You're trying to keep them happy and make them proud, and you're trying to make your own team proud, and you're trying to make your family proud. So I'm, I'm excited to go, and I'm excited to compete and see how I can do it. I think it'll go well, and I have a lot of confidence. But And we've yeah. got some <laughs> shots here of you. Of course, you were on the podium. And a Youth uh, Games Gold, which was the replacement for Youth Olympic Games, in uh, the Arkin Stadium, yeah. no less. Um, what was that like? That was incredible. I mean, I've never been to Aachen, so I was like kind of in awe of the whole entire facility. It was beautiful. I mean, we were on borrowed horses, so that was also something I'd really never done before. And I, I had a great time. Everyone was super nice and welcoming, and all the kids we were with were really 
wanted to get to know me and wanted to know what kind of riding I did versus some of the circuits there on. I mean, I met kids from all over the world, which is at WEF you meet a lot of internationals, but it was even broader there. And I had an amazing time. The facility at Aachen is so beautiful and the horses truly loved it. So, it was, and I got to watch the Grand Prix and the Nations Cup there and that was a totally different type of learning experience. Over there so, onto yeah. the field of dreams from that <laughs> point of view. Yes. Um, for you, I mean, you're, you're <coughs> 19? 18. 18 now. Um, junior gold and then young rider gold and that pathway looks as though it's going how you'd like it to go <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> cross fingers yes how do you feel about it i feel good about it i'm actually going to enter college in the fall so we'll see how i'm able to balance college and riding i really hope to continue to ride at the same level as i am now but of course things change and we'll see if that even happens but i hope to come back to it after college even harder and stronger and just keep getting on teams and i dream to compete at Aachen and dublin and hickstead and all those wonderful venues so <laughs> um you your teammates this week let's talk those for team usa yes. from that point of view um who have we got we have Mavis Spencer, who was actually on my team in Spain and Portugal, and she's incredible. Her horse is known for jumping very, very big, and he's really cool and unique. And then there's Adrian Sterling, who's a bit more experienced, I think. She's been on teams at World Championships, and she's done a whole lot of teams before, m way more than I have, and I think she's going to be a very strong competitor. And then Natalie, as we spoke about earlier, she's also on the team with her small mare, Annie, and I'm very excited to see how it goes. Well, it's going to be an exciting team to come through from there, as you say. Yes. And, and Natalie went so superbly in the five stars here yep. a few weeks ago, so that's going to help things along. Um, Kian, you've done 100 or so Nations Cups now. What advice would you be giving to Mimi? But yeah. maybe not too much advice for the <laughs> Irish, the US team. Mimi doesn't need much advice. I've watched her here the last couple of years because she was competing alongside the boys that I helped the Watchmans in the juniors and the U25, and she stepped up now to the big, big stuff. So she's on her way. She's, she's going really well. Um, no, it's 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 about just I suppose any big competition to treat it like another day, mm. and not, not not to change the preparation. Uh, it was interesting what Mimi said earlier on about the night class kind of upsets your routine a bit by going home, and I can relate to that. You know, it's it's so important I suppose to be organised and to try and treat every competition just like another day. The horse doesn't know. Uh, let's talk the Irish team, and actually we take a little look back at last season as well. You mentioned Max Watchman. Uh, was another younger rider coming through there who you obviously trained, the two Watchman boys so brilliantly. Uh, they had a wonderful performance here and of course winning team in Dublin last year as well for that home one at the Aga Khan. For, for those guys to get that experience and here it was last year with a good performance, what benefit was it to them into the rest of the season? Yeah, I suppose Max had jumped um, some Nations Cups prior to this. He had jumped in, in, in Draman uh, and in Vahir in Spain so this was probably one of his early uh, bigger caps and uh, he was calm uh, his horse Burlux is very experienced but he showed real coolness and calmness here under pressure and uh, he delivered a double clear on Burlux uh, I'm riding him uh, this this weekend <laughs> so hopefully I can I can emulate that or go close to it and um, and then Max went on after that he was doing his leaving cert uh, his finals at school in Ireland so he had a couple of shows uh, lined out uh, in Europe uh, such as Wiesbaden where he was second in the Grand Prix and then Kanaka he jumped the five star Nations Cup there where he jumped clear those results would have got him selected then for the Nations Cup in Dublin and he was part of the winning team there Eugenio spoke about Dublin I know that uh, his team won there a few years back and he said it was his favourite so there's something very special not alone for us as, as the Irish guys winning there but I think everybody Dublin's a bit uh, of a crowd favourite best moment of my career so far hands yeah. down uh, it's just uh, it's one of those traditional shows that you really can't beat you know it's people there are, are are nice and the atmosphere is great and they understand horses so to win there and we can say we were pretty big underdogs so that was that was, <laughs> that, that was a that was a good plus too and yeah we we left there feeling adopted by the Irish. Yeah, it's nice to hear. Well it's lovely. Uh, let's take a look at the winning team from last year because it was Ireland that uh, topped here last time around as well and so uh, last year it was Ireland, Ireland at the top of the podium but of course uh, we've had a host of wins. USA with the nine wins through the 21 years the Nations Cup's taken part uh, here in Wellington but there they are with hands on the trophy uh, last time around. Andrew Bourne's in there and of course uh, Owen McMahon as well onto the team last time around lifting that aloft Pretty happy times last year. Um, Kian, we always say hopefully again, but it's all on the day, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've, I think the first Nations Cup here with Steve was it 21 years ago? Yeah, 21 years yeah. ago. And I came out and I, the, the field here, the ring was the field then, was grass. Yeah. 
and uh, Michelle Grubb gave me a loan of a horse <laughs> and I remember having four fences down in the first round she told me I overrode her and she was right in the next round we changed the bridle and I tried to ride a bit softer and we were clear and I can remember Dennis Quinlan who has since passed away he was a great supporter yeah. he was a, a, an Irish developer over here and he really got behind the Nations Cup himself and Jimmy Doyle yeah. and a couple of others and that's how it all started and so I've been a part of it here going back as long as then so it means a lot to me and uh, we'll certainly be trying our very best to uh, to keep the others back. Sorry, uh, Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry, Max. Okay. Um, you, Henio, favourite memory of being of Nations Cut nights here yet so far? Uh, I've been a part. I've been fortunate enough to be a part of uh, about six, seven of, of these Nations Cup, and I, it's just a second home Nations Cup. I mean, there's so many people from Mexico here that support you. I'd have to say last year was pretty special, jumping the double clear. Um, but, you know, there's also, I've learned a lot in these Nations Cups. I, mean, I remember when I first started doing it the first or second year, I had a horse. We were learning together and I ended up stopping out in the first fence in the round, round the first round. And, well, you got to come back for round two and you got to kick and you got to scream, yell, whatever you got to do to get over it. So kind of, you know, that was my rough introduction to the Nations Cup would be like, you got a second round and you got to, you know, get, get the horse over it and, and be a part of the a part of the team and support your teammates and and it it I learned a lot from it so it was uh, very special for me. Mimi, we're trying not to make you more nervous <laughs> <laughs> from oh that boy. from that point of view. But it but it is it's it's the the beauty of doing that type of competition here and digging deep and going okay if it happens in a in a Grand Prix it's one round it's done but it's as Eugenia says it's back in. Yep. How yeah. are you feeling about that? You've done a couple now. Yeah, I. I think, yeah, the, my first Nations Cup back in Spain, I actually made a bunch of mistakes in the first round, and my team members were had some mistakes, but then there were also some really good rounds, and I kind of went into that thinking, like, oh, my gosh, I'll be fine. Like, I've done this. I've jumped many rounds. Like, I'll be okay. And then I went in and kind of blew it. And I think that was a huge learning experience for me just at that time because I was like, I came in with this big ego thinking, like, oh, I, I can do this. No problem. And then I actually kind of ate my words and was like, wait, I actually have to remember what I've been taught and, like, ride my best. So I think I'm hoping to not have that experience <laughs> this time, but I have that in the back of my head thinking, like, ride the way you know it, listen to your coach, feel the way your horse is feeling, and, like, really deep down, like, think what you're doing. So. But, but there's always the argument, Kian, that you learn more from your s mistakes than your successes. Yeah, I suppose you've got to take the good with the bad and, and from everything take the positive experiences. But Mimi's so right, it's, it's, it's also mind over matter. It's about getting yourself in the zone and focusing. And we always say in Nations Cups, you've got to ride every jump because you can't give away or be, be clumsy or be too deep or too far off or not enough leg. You have to ride every jump like it's important. And if you have a fence down, you know, you can still hold it together. It's a long way when you have other teammates and you have two, two rounds each. So, um, yeah, it's really a game about keeping your nerve and uh, it's not over till the, till the, till the final guy goes. I've, I've seen you in that anchor roll quite a few <laughs> times in that deep, deep, deep <laughs> position. Um, Irish team this week, who, you've got obviously a group of five that you go down to a group of four. What's, what's it looking like this week? Yeah, I think barring something happens, it, it's, um, I think it's going to be David Blake. His horse jumped very well on the grass a few weeks ago. Looks to be a really nice horse, horse called Claude. He was fifth in the Grand Prix uh, week six. Um, uh, Max is riding Kilkenny, which is obviously the horse I had before, mm -hmm. and he got on really well with him. He jumped in five star here a few weeks ago. He did a couple of clear rounds, and so for him, it's a big stepping stone to jump on the team and get used to that horse. Uh, I've got Berlux uh, this weekend. Um, I haven't done that much with him. He was clear in a WEF, and I had one down in the five star Grand Prix a few weeks ago. And uh, then we've Shane Sweetenham, and he's got a horse that I can't pronounce the name Namaste. of. Namaste. 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 <laughs> And uh, I know he jumped really well a few weeks ago. He was second in a four-star yes. Grand Prix. So uh, there's a good group of horses. And then, obviously, six riders can ride. So I know Daniel is here, and so is Bertram. Yeah. And they're, they're ready to step in. Excellent. Um, so Team Ireland looking to go up there again. Team Ireland, you've won, uh, what, four times before now as well. So going for okay. the fifth. You're trying to catch up with the Americans on the <laughs> nine at the moment. I can tell you, USA have won, Ireland have won, Canada and Great Britain. Of one. Oh, Mexico, man, no. the doors is door is open this year. <laughs> oh, we'll try. We'll definitely try. <laughs> uh, Mexican squad. Who are we looking at? What's, what's uh, the... looking at Carlos Hank, uh, just the music, you know, a, a proven combination. Then we have uh, Arturo Parada and the horse called Bacot. Uh, bases in Mexico, but is here there in the winter. Um, he uh, he was good in the night class, the five star last week. And then Tanimara Macari and her horse Chica. I believe this will be her first uh, Nations Cup, Senior mm -hmm. Nations Cup outing, but she's been doing great. 
she was third in a Grand Prix and a three star in the earlier weeks. So, um, so it should be a, it should be a good team. And then myself with Contago. And how do you rate your chances? Good. <laughs> Can I say anything else? No, no, exactly. <laughs> no, but it's good. You had a great performance last time around. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, you, you're going to come with a bit of confidence? Yeah, d definitely. I mean, it, it's always tough to beat these two guys. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you got the, uh, the U.S. With a, with a young but very strong team. I mean, all these girls are proven at the top level. And then you got the Irish, who are uh, pretty similar team to the team that just won in, in Dublin, Aga Khan, with the exception of Connor Swale and David Blake. And then Canada has her has their A team, so it's 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 difficult. I mean, anything can happen in a Nations Cup setting, but we're gonna give it our best and and uh, hope to do our jobs and hope that these guys don't do theirs. So it brings me on to that. We've got Argentina, we've got Australia, we've got Belgium, we've got Brazil, we've got Canada. Canada. Let's remember Ian Miller's coming out as yeah. chef to keep for the first time. Uh, are you guys nervous? Coming out swinging. They got they got a good team, I think. So um, Chile. Great Britain, Ireland, Mexico, USA, Venezuela. It's not going to be easy, is it? I have to cheer for Great Britain and Ireland as well because <laughs> my <laughs> trainer's on that team and David's on that team, so I'm cheering for everyone. So you've got everybody in your barn spread across. So yep. the US, Irish, British, one, yes. two, three would be fine. Yes. Sorry, Mexico, you're one more. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kian, from that point of view, Belgium is what I'm going to pull out of there. Um, could be one that maybe is off the radar a little for a few here, but bear, bearing in mind how well Belgium has gone in the last few years from being European champions to being back on to the podium Absolutely. in the Olympic Games as well. Okay, it's not some of the same riders, but they have real strength in depth. Real strength in depth and, and good horses, top riders, so you can never count them out. It's interesting, uh, you mentioned Ian there, so like yeah. I would be totally in awe of Ian Miller as a, as a rider and everything that he did, all the Olympic Games that he did, and, and I suppose how he was able to stay in the top sport for so long. Um, and, as, and move with the times uh, in his own style. But to see him now as manager will be very interesting. He epitomizes everything about Nations Cups, uh, about team jumping, and I think he'll instill that into his troops, and we would be a little bit fearful of Canada, to be honest. I, I was going to ask, the, the chef to keeps, how big a role is it? Because there are people like Ian that you know, and we can name a number of people over the years, that can take a group of riders and inspire them into a team to be something bigger than the maybe they are individually. Yeah, I think as I touched on earlier on, it's difficult when you can't blame riders. Like this is week eight of 12, yeah. uh, as you know, there was five star last week, week seven, and there's five star next week, week nine. And if you're coming to the top three in either of those Grand Prix, you can get eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000. And if you're in the top three here, you get five, six, mm. eight, ten thousand $10,000 a man. So a lot of sacrifices and you can't blame riders or owners not wanting to do it. But it's interesting that Team Canada didn't start last week the four horses that they, are jumping they're going to come home they're, nations, coming, they're, they're coming out fresh <laughs> so uh, I think that says a lot and uh, it's hard to get people to make that sacrifice uh, you'd love to see huge money in the nation's cups because I think generally the riders want to do it um, but, but somebody like Ian Miller I think when, when he decides to pull a team out uh, we'd be certainly wouldn't count him out but for you here, sitting here right now, Mimi, you've pulled on you know, the, the polo shirt today, but we've seen you just been trying on the, the jacket as well. That's worth more than anything. Yes, 100%. I mean, when I first got it and they called me and they were like, well, now you need to order your jacket. I was like, oh, this is exciting, something new. And I know Charles pretty well and he makes our jackets. And I was, he was like, wow, Mimi, this is a big step. I've known you since you were a little, little girl. And I was like, yep, this is it. Mm -hmm. I've got to figure it out soon. So I'm excited. We're excited. Yeah. Um, when did you first pull on your, your green jacket? I think when I was uh, 18. Uh, yeah. My first Nations Cup was in <laughs> Croatia, go. in Zagreb. <laughs> yes. And then Athens shortly after. Yeah, so it's the same. You start off and you make the mistakes and build up and get, get going, you know. I remember those yeah. shows. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eugenio, from your point of view, we've got a few others in there that, that may play a part. Uh, the likes of Argentina, Brazil could could shake things up a little bit. Yeah, Argentina are down to three riders, so that's gonna make things a little bit harder. But the likes of Brazil are always pretty strong. Yeah, absolutely. Brazil, great riders. Um, don't really know exactly what horses they're gonna be riding, but I mean, the, the riders here are, are phenomenal. You got Eduardo Meneses, you got Rodrigo Pessoa. Um, so can't count them out for sure. Yeah, and making uh, making up the team, you've got Fabio Leves to Costa and you've got Luis Francisco de Azevedo for the Brazilians this time around. Yeah, it's gonna be tough to beat them. And, it's going to be a, a good good show jumping all around, I think. Um, so aside from yourselves, um, I'm going to go for some picks for you. I, let, let me say your biggest challenger 
Let, let's go. Let's get out of Mexico first. Who's going to be your biggest challenger for the week in terms of the team? I'm going to say, I'm going to say Ireland. Yeah. I'm going to say Ireland. You're going to watch the Irish. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Kian? Canada. Canada coming on strong against the Irish. Cool. Team USA. I was also going to say Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Ireland for you. Yes. Canada for him. Ireland. Ireland. But but this is the podium, isn't it? I just hope they're right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, good luck to you all. Um, it's a big week. It's a tense week. Um, as I say, it's going to be teams on Saturday night. Then we're into Grand Prix on Sunday. Mimi, best of luck to the home team. Thank you. They're going to be great. Uh, you're going to be the, the leading that team out, I'm sure, Hello, for the Irish. See, hopefully, try and do a good job. You, you will be great. The mm. Irish, the Irish, always put up a good performance. Mexico, we want to hear those cheers. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Eugenio Kian. And Mimi, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, let's just remind you what's on the agenda for this week, just to put that into order for you. Um, and we've got coming up on Friday night, of course, is also the U25, part of their members series, uh, is the semi-final. That's going to be a night class there as well. Saturday Nations Cup split into two sections, daytime and evening as well. Uh, you can join us on the streaming for that. In between, of course, will be the uh, show. We'll give you a little bit of a rundown of what's going on in the Nations Cup and going into that second round of how it's coming together and who might be the winners. So make sure you get a little bit of insight there. Joining me should be Laura Kraut, McLean Ward and uh, Niall Nasser, so they should know a thing or two. And uh, also it's going to be uh, Grand Prix on Sunday as well as part of the Ida Development Week 2. So thank you very much for joining us. Good luck. Uh, join us throughout the week for the Nations Cup. It's get your flags out, get uh, all the team spirit going and we look forward to following it all either live in the arena or on the streaming as well that's brought to you by wellington equestrian realty each week and of course it's on wellingtoninternational.com for now uh, we'll be back and get those flags ready for nations cup week <laughs>